Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Uh, I know it's been dang near a month since I posted anything. I was trying to get another flying video up, but uh, over the last couple weeks, I was scheduled to fly four times, I think, and canceled every time due to either weather or maintenance problems. So this video will try to give you guys a little bit of an update on how our calving season's going and show you a couple new things we bought. So at this point in the game, I would say we're almost halfway done with calving. I think we've had a little over 60 calves at this point, which overall, that's probably below average. Um, normally, we like to see two, three to four calves a day. But we've had a couple dry spells of two or three days where we don't have any. So there's really nothing we can do about that that's uh, all mother nature uh, but we're getting towards the end of march here and a couple two or three weeks we'll be starting about we'll be starting to think about uh get some crops in the ground so we we'll like we like for as many of these ladies to have calves as they can so right now i got you guys in what i call the nursery field so we got two main pastures that we calve in We'll leave the, uh, as soon as the calf's born, we'll leave it with its mom for one or two days to kind of establish a good bond, get walking good, then we'll turn them all in here. So I wanted to show you guys this little dude. So he's a little bull calf, but his face is all jacked up. So we don't know if he was formed this way or maybe he broke his nose coming out of the out of the birth canal but he seems to be doing okay he was born yesterday and he can obviously breathe and he can walk and he can suck on his mom so hopefully he'll turn out okay but i've never seen anything like that it's like he's got one nostril and his nose is clear on the side of his face What do you think, little buddy? You're a YouTube star now. So this story may be interesting to you. So the cow, she actually lost her calf. Uh, we had to pull it, but it came out breached. And it was, by the time we got to it, it was already dead. And then that little calf, you can see he's got a red ear tag. That means he was a twin. So his, his original mama really didn't want him uh, so we had to bring him down the barn. My Uncle Speed bottle fed him for a couple weeks. But then when that cow lost her calf, we kind of put these two together. And the cow accepted the calf. And the calf accepted the cow. So they're kind of a... Uh, that calf, I guess you could say he's adopted. So I don't think I've ever showed you guys our herd of bulls. So right now, technically, we have eight bulls, uh, but we got an old one that's probably got, not going to be much count this year. So we just got a new one. So normally we'll run seven bulls. We got 150 cows, so we're relying on them. Bulls to each breed, about 20 to 25 cows every year. So I'll give you guys a quick crash course on how we pick out our bulls and how I assume most other cattlemen and ranchers pick out their bulls so a couple weeks ago me and van went down to bull sale down in maize lick kentucky uh we purchased our last three or four four bulls from these guys and their bulls seemed to do a good job for us so we went back down as the uh the top bull in this sale he was the uh, boyd bell ringer 2010 um so it'll tell you the birth date and it'll list the bloodlines from which this bull came from so the top two are usually the sire or the daddy side. The bottom two are usually the dam or the mom side. And then these are all the offspring that they have produced. And then you'll see a bunch of numbers. So these are what they call expected progeny differences. So these are basically educated guesses on what the offspring that this bull produces are going to look like. At the bottom of the page, there's breed averages, 
and they uh, they measure everything from the size of the calves at birth that this bull is going to produce, uh, the guesses on how much they're going to weigh at weaning time, how much they're going to weigh once they reach a year old, how crazy they're going to be, uh, how good a shape their feet are going to be, and then it even gets into things like uh, how much marbling and the size of the ribeyes for the uh, carcasses once they go to the butcher. So the key thing here is uh, these are expected. So like I said, educational guesses. So then we come into the specific numbers for this bull and the offspring that he's going to produce. So you got the numbers in blue and then the numbers in white, which are percentages. So for example, the, uh, the yearling weight of his calves once they reach a year old are expected to be in the top 1% of the Angus breed. So this particular bull went for $165,000, which was just outside of our budget. On into the windup in his first offering. Just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. So now I'll show you the bull that we ended up with. Uh, going into the sale, we had nine or ten target bulls picked out uh, but they each went for well over ten thousand dollars and we were given a strict budget of eight thousand dollars and we were supposed to bring home a Hereford bull as you can see we ended up with an Angus um, he wasn't one that we went in initially to get uh, but I think he'll turn out to be a pretty good bull for us so this is uh, one of the purchases that we made. Actually, it was more probably my idea, but uh, this is what they call a calf catcher. It was invented by a guy out in Kansas that was trying to tag a calf one day. A mama cow injuring pretty good, I guess, and he was in the hospital for three or four months. So he invented this to kind of make that whole process easier. Um, as I've showed you on a couple videos, we have some crazy cows and it seems every year more and more of them are crazy when it comes to us trying to handle the calves and to me uh, it's just no fun when you gotta worry about somebody getting hurt so I got this to make that whole process easier and safer for everybody so for all the uh, there's probably rough to tough cowboys out there that's calling me a pansy right now and that's that's fine I understand uh, but I'm all about working smarter, not harder. So I'll show you guys how this thing operates. So it's basically just a, I would call it a three by five pin that you can attach to pretty much any UTV. I've got this on our uh, Kubota Sidekick 850. Uh, this gate opens in the back. And gives you pretty good access to and from the UTV or whatever you got. Now, when I ordered this, the builder had never made a bracket for a Kubota RTV. So it took him a couple days to find one out there in Kansas. He has to custom make the brackets, uh, but overall it wasn't too bad. Um, and basically it just runs off the winch on your machine. So the whole idea is you'll come up to a calf and straddle the cage over that calf and then lower it down. The mama cow can do whatever she's going to do. You can get in the cage, uh, vaccine, band the calf, tag the calf, get out, get in the UTV, raise the cage, and off you get. Now when I was researching these things, there were a couple, st couple different styles. Uh, a lot of them uh, had basically a whole bigger cage that that uh, rode beside the UTV. You couldn't raise it, you couldn't lower it. And uh, that would probably be okay in certain situations. Uh, but with the rough country that we have around here, I thought it would be better to have something that I can raise up in the air and be a little bit more maneuverable with couple concerns I have right off the bat so if I pull up to a calf cows going nuts 
what's going to keep that cow from jumping in the damn UTV. Number two, like I said, this whole thing runs off a winch and it's pretty slow. So if that calf's running, I don't know how easy it's going to be to, to lower that cage and trapping. So it's your guys' lucky day because we just went up, checked the calves. We had a cow that just had a calf. Uh, we started to walk up to it to tag it, got about 20 yards and old number 54 cow started coming at us. So I remember 54 cow from last year and normally when I remember a number, it's not for a good reason. So she was mean last year, she's mean this year. So we're gonna try this calf catcher out, see what she's got. Keep on going. Okay, okay.
Okay, so I guess it's time for me to give my first official review of a product on YouTube. The, uh, the calf catcher folks did not ask me to do this. I'm just doing it on my own. Um, so all in all, I'm going to call this thing a win. Uh, that cow that probably didn't look that mean to you guys on the video, but I can guarantee you there is no way we could have walked up to that calf and did what we had to do to it. Um, it would have taken a lot of time and a lot of attempts to somehow separate that cow in the calf or throw the calf in the back of the truck and would have been a lot of time and risking somebody getting hurt. So all in all, I paid $3,800 for this unit, and I think it cost me $500 to ship it. So $4,300 total. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of money. Um, but when you think about the hospital bill for a broken arm or a broken shoulder, as far as I'm concerned, this thing's already paid for itself. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. To all the new subscribers that I've noticed funneling in over the past few weeks, Appreciate you guys giving me a try and all my diehard viewers. I uh, appreciate your guys' continued support. I will do my best to make my next video a flying video, but I never know. Some of the things are out of my control. Uh, but until next time, America.